So in this first video, as part of our tutorial series on CDS views, we will be seeing how to create a CDS view entity. Now a CDS view entity is a really basic kind of a CDS view. So it's probably a good starting point to learn the entire topic of CDS views. We will be creating a CDS view entity on top of the sales order table VBAK. A CDS view entity is a projection view so a view created on one database table it's like the projection view that we create in se 11 sometimes in backend ABAP. so first of all we log on to eclipse eclipse is going to be our development environment for all our cds views this window in eclipse is referred to as the project explorer we can use this to create different kinds of projects based on which programming language and environment we are using. Now, one type of project which is relevant for us would be the ABAP project. As you can see, my ABAP project is already set up. Now in the Eclipse terminology, an ABAP project is linked to your SAP development system, the client on which you're going to develop, your user ID and the logon language. All of these elements when put together give you your ABAP project name. You can think of an ABAP project simply as the client on which we log on in order to develop. So let us open up our ABAP project. Now before we start developing anything in ABAP, we need a package under which we are going to assign our objects. As we know, an SAP system contains hundreds of packages. All of these packages are going to be listed under the system library. Drilling down to find the right package from the system library every time can be quite time consuming. So it's usually a good idea to add your development package as a favorite under the favorite packages options. You do this with the right click context menu. Once you have added your package to the favorites menu, Use the right click context menu to trigger the creation of a new object. We select other ABAP repository object. You can use the folder structure to search for the type of object that you want to create. Or we can type the first few letters of the object type. In our case, we know that we want to create a CDS data definition. So we can just type out the first few letters of the word, select the data definition from the list and click on next. We fill out the name of the CDS view that we want to create, provide a suitable description, click on next. You can either choose to create a new transport request from here or use an already existing one. I already have a transport request in my system, so I'm just going to put in the number over here and click on next. Now you can see a lot of predefined templates that are available here, which help us to speed up the process of creation of CDS data definitions. Each of the template that you see here refers to a different use case scenario. On the right side, you have a description of the use case scenario that you have selected here. If you use a template, a lot of the code that is needed for the data definition will already be provided to you out of the box. In our case, we would like to create a view entity. So we select the relevant template for that and click on finish. The template brings in the basic skeleton of the code of the data definition. Now, there may be some technical aspects of this that we don't immediately need to understand. So our goal at ABAP Junction is to get our viewers to the fun part of coding as quickly as possible while keeping the technical details at a comfortable level. So for now, let's just focus on only the most important things. And as we go along, the other details will also be explained. 
one of the most important things that we should know about CDS views are annotations. So annotations are elements within a data definition that help you to control and influence different aspects of the behavior of the data definition. There are different kinds of annotations that are used for different purposes. And we will learn them as we work our way through this series. The first annotation is the end user text label. Now you can identify annotations with this at symbol. This is the end user text label annotation followed by a colon sign. And this is then the value of the annotation. Over here, the end user text label is used to provide a description sales order header to this data definition. This is very similar to the description that we provide when we create a table or a view in SE11. The next part of the code to focus on is the define view entity statement that we have over here. We can see the name of the data definition that we had given in earlier. Now, a CDS, is, a CDS view is essentially a view built on top of one or more database sources. These sources may be database tables or other views. In our case, we are building a view entity which is essentially a projection view on one single database source. In our case, the database source is going to be the table VBAK. And we provide the name of this database source over here. We have to set one or more fields from the source table as the key fields of the CDS view. In our case, the CDS view refers to the sales order header table. And so I choose the sales order number as the key field. Along with the name of the source field, whenever we define the elements in a CDS data definition, we also specify an alias for the field. Now this becomes especially important if you plan to use the view for development of OData services and Fury applications. We specify the name of an alias using the keyword as Now let's go ahead and add some other elements into the view. The CDS editor provides us a very nice auto completion functionality. If we press control and space, we get a list of all the fields that are present in the source. Along with the source field names, we also see the description of the source fields. This would help you to decide which fields to be added into your data model. Select any of the fields that you need. Do not forget the comma at the end of every field except the last one. Once you are done adding in all the elements, save and activate the data definition just like you would do to any other artifact in ABAP. As you can see, we have some warnings being generated over here, but for now, let's ignore these for the moment. Now it's time to test our view entity. Follow the menu path run, run as ABAP application, or else you could simply use the shortcut key F8. Now this is very similar to the display entries functionality that we have in ABAP which we often use to view the table entries in SE11 or SE16, for example. A few things to be noted here. The column names that you see here are actually the alias names for the fields that you had defined earlier. By default, Eclipse has retrieved 100 rows from the view. This can, of course, be changed to any value that you like. Using the Add Filter button, we can filter out records based on certain filter criteria. For example, I would just like to see records with the sales organization 1010. Let us briefly now have a look at a package in the Project Explorer. Under the package name, we have the core data services. Under that, we have data definitions. And under that, we can see the actual view entity that we just created. 
Let's also briefly have a look at what has happened in the backend SAP system. In SE11, under view, we put in the name of the CDS view entity that we just created. And as you probably already know, CDS views can be displayed here in SAP GUI, but they cannot be edited. And finally, let's have a look at our transport request in SAP. We can see the object of type data definition language source. And under that, we have the name of the view entity that we just created. This is now logged in the transport request and ready for transport. So this is how we create a view entity in Eclipse. This is of course very basic, but as we proceed with the other videos in the series, we will continue adding functionality and slowly progressing into the more complex topics. So before we end, a brief summary of what we just saw in this video. Our ABAP project has to be first set up in the Project Explorer within your Eclipse environment. A CDS view entity is like a projection view built on top of one data source, for example, a database table. We used the predefined templates provided by Eclipse to generate the source code for the view entity data definition. We also used the autocomplete functionality to add in elements from the data source. We used aliases for the elements within our data definition we also saw how to test the view using the run application functionality. That's it for this video. I encourage you to try this out on your own before you move on to the next video in the series. In the next video, we will be seeing the concept of joins within CDS views. Thank you and keep coding.